You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm uh, Keith Razor setting up the Zoom thing, Razor Riffs. Uh, Alan Lee will not be joining us uh, this morning. Uh, he has his day job today. He's a, uh, during these tough times, I don't want to say what he does. He might not like that, but he's a workforce guy putting his life in the line every day during these tough, tough times. While me, I, uh, don't really need to do that every single day. I have the luxury of not doing it. So I didn't feel like doing that today, but he uh, needs to. It's part of his will to live, to make sure others survive and all that jazz. So God bless him and all that. A um, couple things. My stand-up special, Keith Reza, make it happen. It's just been uh, released on uh, YouTube, so check it out for free. I don't get a dime. I know. Uh, we tried pitching it, and I think coronavirus and just uh, all that stuff, I think that had something to do with it. We're trying to um, – still trying to get it on Amazon Prime, which we're, we're working on. And, uh, you know, we'll do that uh, as soon as we can. But if not, it's still on Apple Pod. It's on a iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. So if you want to support it, buy it on iTunes for $10. Uh, if not, you know, watch it on YouTube. Tell a friend, subscribe, rate, and review. And tell another friend because that's how these things get uh, popular. They, they get shared. And people don't understand the power of the word share. It can really help someone's career. And one of my guests who I'm talking to is a stand-up specials on YouTube. And it's one of the highest rated ones. So, you know, if anyone knows about what I'm going through, it would be this guy, I guess. And we're going to talk to him and get, get his views on that. So, we're... Uh, it's going to be fun. But if you like the show, subscribe, rate, and review to Raise the Riffs. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that jazz. We're, uh, we got to get social media numbers. Uh, we're not in the studio right now with COVID, but I get the emails from the director who's directing from his house. He's like, you got you got plug it on social media, man. You got to get those numbers. You get good guests and all that stuff. I'm not the best plugger because um, I don't know. I'm just, I think I don't know how to do social media that well, which is weird because you would think with my Asperger's, I would know everything about the internet, but I don't. Uh, I know everything about porn and writing and all that jazz. Writing porn. <laughs> no? Okay. Also, I wanted to say there's this new app called Stereo. Uh, you could download it on your phone. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, iTunes. It doesn't have to be an iPhone or anything. But you could download it on your phone. And um, it will... What it is is like it's like podcasting roulette. You know, you could chat with uh, several other people. And, uh, you know, you could... Uh, you could do that, and it's fun. Um, you can follow me on Stereo at Keith Reza. I'm one of the content creators. It's uh, I want to. I didn't create the app. Uh, what happened was the guy who created the app searched me and wanted me to do the comedy on it. And uh, I'm very flattered, you know. Well, our guest is in the waiting room. Uh, let's give him an introduction. He's uh on the new show Cobra Kai, or it's not new, it's on uh, Netflix now, the sequel to The Karate Kids. 
uh, Comedy Central and Weeds, Brett Ernst, guys. I mean, we're, I'm admitting him right now. I think it worked. Did it work? No. Hey, Brett, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I don't know yeah, why I could. Oh, wait, hold on. This is why. Logitech, start video. There we go. <laughs> oh, hey, Brett. How are you, man? What's up, pal? Not much. Can you hear me good? Can you hear me good? I can hear you good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. Let me uh let me close this shit up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing you closed it because like we could be like rifting or whatever, and then someone could just walk by and like really freak me out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, Brett, how you doing, man? You doing good with this all this Corona stuff? Yeah, we did. We start already or no? Yeah, yeah, we're starting. We're just we're just awesome. rifting. That's what it is. Just talking and stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I um, yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm in Florida. Nobody cares down here. Really? Yeah, everybody's out having fun. Yeah, you're you're doing comedy right now. You're one of the few comics actually working right now. How how like are the shows different or like is it a Oh yeah, I mean capacity wise, you know, they're they're filling it up to like uh uh 75 uh, 50% some places, some places are 75, but uh Florida's at 100% capacity. So my mother my mother's down here and I'm I'm in between uh locations right now. So I'm probably going to be full well I'm definitely going to be full time in Vegas, but um I was getting my place together. So I just happened to stay down here and you know and they opened up first. So there's been a lot of work down here. Thank God. Uh, uh, I think I should move to Florida. I mean, <laughs> for now. <laughs> we could be roommates. I, uh, I've done one show in this whole six months, and, like, it's, it's been very depressing for me. You know what I mean? Where, where did you do it at? It was in Fresno. <laughs> well, I, I, that might have been depressing either way, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but so, you know, there – I'm kind of worried that like this whole thing is just like going to kill the comedy clubs because I don't think comedy clubs could survive on 50%. Do you? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, it, it might hurt Cali and some other States more than others, you know? Um, but yeah. everything has, everything's resilient. Everything has a way of coming back. I meant, you know, um, it's, I've seen some pretty innovative things, you know, I, I was in Sacramento at the punchline, I'm not the punchline, the uh, laughs unlimited. And they were doing a show in the parking lot and they took the concept of the silent disco, you know, with the headphones and you can yeah. go to DJ you want to listen to. Um, and they did it for comedy. So everybody in the parking lot had the headphones on. I had the headphones on and it was actually a pretty cool experience, man. Oh. And then, you know, you're seeing a lot of the drive-ins come, you know, doing stuff outdoors more. I know Chappelle's doing like 400 something shows up in his farm. Um, <laughs> you know, have you ever been to his farm? No, never. never. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think I was ever invited, but uh, that was not, but no. Um, so you, you, you'll see things start to evolve to, uh, you know, different things. And some, some things will close, some things will open, you know, we'll survive yeah. I think I think I'm just stressed because one one of the comedy clubs that I co book that you actually are one of the few comics to do a full weekend there, the rec room in Huntington Beach. Yeah. You know, like I, I you know, we haven't even opened yet. And I'm like stressing, you know. You'll be okay. Yeah. I hope I mean so. listen, I mean if 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 no Nobody's making money, then nobody's getting paid. I, they might as well just hit the reset button. The banks, the the, the tenants, the lawyers, I mean, the uh, the owners just hit the reset button. You're like, all yeah, right, yeah. we'll just start this past year. We don't have to pay the bank. We're not getting interest. Don't worry about it. Start fresh. Yeah, I, I don't should, think that's going to happen, but that would be ideal. Yeah, I, I should tell that I did to my landlady. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, hey, listen. Let's just wipe this year off. Give me freebies. Wipe this year off. <laughs> but uh, I I also have a feeling like as a comic, I like I feel that in a way this is actually like in a twisted way this is actually a good thing because you know how there's all these like bad comics or comics who just do it to socialize and not really care about the art. I feel like they are gonna go out. You know what I mean? 
Um, yeah, there's always there's always something to thin the herd. Yeah, and, I would uh, agree with that. I mean, you know, when I started, it was the end of the boom. I started in like '96, '97. So, uh, you know, and then then I was in that reality era. So, a lot of people that got into stand up back then to try and get development deals and to you know get a get a part on a TV show because they were given sitcoms to comics a lot back then. Um, they ended up falling off. Yeah. You know, so I, I do notice that there's more comics that are more about being in a scene than they are about the art form itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, does that like, does that like kind of hurt you as a comic? Because you're, you've, you've done some movies and shows and stuff, but I, I, I look at you more as a comic, you know what I mean? It doesn't affect me. I mean, people, people are going to do what they want to do. You yeah. know, I'm not going to sit there and say that these people shouldn't be around. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, it, it, they either are going to survive or, or die, yeah. it's, you know, so if they decide to, to get, I mean, look, no major club is going to book somebody because they're hanging out with somebody. Yeah, no, I didn't mean that. I just meant like, cause you've gone through a lot in your career. So like, I guess what's the advice of surviving this? You know what I mean? I mean, just keep getting up. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny to me because there wasn't, uh, you know, we, when, when I was coming up, like in the early, like from 2000 to like 2000, maybe 18, maybe 15 or 16. Yeah. Um, you know, there wasn't as many comedians because now everybody's on online. Everybody's trying to be a stand up. You know what yeah. I mean? But you can't fake what we do. And let, even if you're stealing material, you still got to present it. You still got to have stage presence, you know, and, and, and you'll still get, you'll, you'll get found out. So you know, the co comedy's always been something that's, uh, even though the industry doesn't view it as a meritocracy, um, you know, audiences do. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah. ever had other comics uh, take your jokes and like, yeah. were you there? Like, how yeah. does that make, like, that's never really happened to me because like, I'm not a huge name, but like, I would assume that like. But look, there's comics that we've had. I've been accused of taking jokes. Oh, you yeah. have? Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, I, but all mine was documented. Um, my closer, I've had like a bunch of people hit me up, um, about my closer for my, uh, half hour was similar to what Colin Quinn had, but I shot mine in 09 and it was released in 10 and he, his was released later. Right. But you know, people that they're, they're, and obviously he didn't take mine, Yeah. you know, so you do have. Chris similarities yeah. but then then there's the blatancy of it which that happened to me one time and and i had to call the kid and i said what are you doing and and i i had a bit that i was very i was known for that you couldn't really actually here's a good story on that one so i when i first started i had this roller skating bit and it went viral it's still out there it's got like yeah. eight million views and it was with music and about the old guy at the skating rink so there's a comic. I told him I'll never mention his name. He was young when he was coming up and he was in Vegas. And I mean, I, I literally got like 15 phone calls. Right. Going, Dude, so-and-so is doing your, your roller skating bit. And I'm just laughing. I'm like, no, he's not. And they said, yeah, he is. So I called him up. I said, I said, man, what are you doing? He's like, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't think anybody would find out. I didn't have enough material. So, yeah. And I needed to close strong. And I said, all right, man, but, you know, just this is only a one time thing. You, you know, every, you've already got a mark on you. Right. And, and, you know, that's what comics do. They police themselves in a sense. And, and you can watch a comic and see a similar joke and don't be like he stole that joke because he has a body of work. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. Whereas you could tell a comic is borrowing from different comics with the material. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but talk about similar premises. So I had this roller skating bit with music and uh, I had another comic friend of mine who um, had a joke similar to that. And we just did it on the same night and we had the audience vote whose was better, but, oh, there's, no, God. but there's no way we, we, he would have known about it or I would have known about it. We didn't know. We didn't run in those circles. Oh, that's a pretty cool concept. Having the audience vote. <laughs> mine won over, over, over yeah, I'm, I'm sure it did. How is that bang? It's great, man. <laughs> I drink this stuff all the time. I have it in my writer too. 
Like if I'm at a club, I'm like, uh, they're like, does he need anything? And they said, no, not really. Just a couple of bangs, uh, energy drinks. <laughs> and you mix it, man. You can mix it with like Tito's. Yeah. <laughs> really good stuff, man. Have you had the Have you had the sweet tea one? It came out like yeah, absolutely two weeks ago or something. I haven't had sweet it yet. Tea. I had the sweet tea. They have the sweet tea with lemon, and then the regular, and then the regular with lemon. But I just had the sweet tea yesterday. It's good, man. Yeah. It's good. well, you know, Bang is. It, I'm in South Florida, so they're they're from down here. Oh, really? They're off like right up the street, so every place has them here. Oh, so you you got the you got the sweet tea bang before California did? Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, they have every every store carries like fully stocked. You know, when I was growing up, they had this thing called Jones Soda. Do you remember Jones Soda? I remember Jolt. I don't remember Jones. Oh, well, it was. Uh, I'm also it's... 50 years older than you. <laughs> Even though I look younger than you, Jesus Christ, man. You got to take better care of yourself. What's going on with this quarantine? You got to shave, make yourself. I, I know. Well, see, I'm growing a beard for like when acting comes back, I can say, Hey, do you need a, a part of a, with a, of the guy with a beard? You know, they're like, no, but if you didn't have the beard, yeah, they can always put a beard on you. You know, there's a thing <laughs> called makeup. Well, you know what I, you know, what I realized is I, I, okay, here's a, here's a funny story. I auditioned for this thing. It was called On the Spectrum, and uh, it was about this TV show about uh, people on the spectrum living in a roommate's. And uh, they said, you know, I got it because I actually do. I am on the spectrum. I have autism. And so I am. And that's like the thing I could audition for because I know the character, you know. And they're like, hey, if you grow a beard, this part is yours. And I was like, all right. And I can't grow a beard. So, like, I'm, like, growing it, you know. Five months later, I call back. I'm like, hey, I got the beard. And they're like, oh, we gave it to Rick Glassman. <laughs> really? Oh, I know. I know. Because Rick's on the spectrum, too, isn't he? Yeah. So, <laughs> I was like, oh, you could have told me that. Cause... Yeah, to me, though, what does that mean? Like, like, um, does it just mean you're really creative? Um, well, I have a form of autism called Asperger's syndrome. So like, I'm very, um, I'm socially awkward and I'm creative. Like that's where my mind writes and the creativity. But like, if I'm like talking to like you and some other guy who I don't know, I would just like be very quiet. You know what I mean? And like, like I'm terrible at threesomes basically. <laughs> yeah. So well, I mean, being quiet when a stranger's around, that's just called being uh, Sicilian, bro. Yeah, but like you it's also should, if you were an organized crime, that shit would work for you. you <laughs> they, oh, yeah, he can't whack him. He already, he, you know, he doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah, but like everyone's like, uh, they're like, hey, so how does it? Because like I do stand up, and they're like, how do you do stand up? Then it's like, well, that's different because when I do stand up, I don't, I don't hear laughter, and I don't imagine people are there. I just act like I'm talking, be myself. You know what I mean? I use my imagination. But you're. Uh... But it, I mean, like, I never knew, I, I guess if you're comfortable with somebody, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Right. You're fine. Yeah. Like if I bond with someone like over comedy and stuff, like the three things I know a lot about is comedy, porn and presidents. So like, I'm, you know, we are like my brother. About, yeah. <laughs> and your brother's name's Keith too, right? Yeah. Holy and he, he, uh, he knows everything about the presidents, <laughs> everything he <knows laughs> them, knows everything about them. I know everything about porn <laughs> <laughs> and comedy, right? Like, well, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm, 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 I'm not a fan of stand up. I, I, I'm not, I don't watch it. Like, I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. And I thought it was unique when I like the first six years, but then I found out a lot of comics are like this where like, if somebody has a new special, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't watched, like you could name, comics i've never even seen if i didn't work with them at the store or in new york you know on like a showcase club you yeah. know where you're like all right so the next guy next guy next guy if i wasn't watching i wouldn't know um there's very few comics that i actually know their stand-up i'm the same I mean, way it, it's do you think yes yeah, that... so i'm not a fan of it I, I i i could give you i could tell you everything about my creative process and the way I perform and, you know, the things that I do, but everybody's process is different as well. But I do love performing 
and I love the the writing and and you know there's nothing to me like you know like uh, Neil Brennan's a good friend of mine. Neil right. is one of the best joke writers around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes I'll hear him, hear him articulate a point of view, even though I don't agree with some of his. And and it's still I'm like wow that that guy's a that guy's a craftsman at that. The guy can craft a joke. Yeah. Just you know, and and you see the perfection and the beauty in it. Yeah. So like that that was another question. I was like, when you started in '96, because I started in 2005, and the, when I started, that was just when like the internet was really taken, like going off. Like everyone was on MySpace and stuff. You know what I mean? So what was it like when you were starting when it was more a word of mouth to get into clubs and all that stuff? I mean, it was not easier. It was, uh, and, and truth be told, it was way more of a meritocracy back then. You know, uh -huh. I've used that word twice already, but it's, it's because stand-up isn't that way anymore. They're, they're checking off different boxes. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and again, it's something you just have to be good at. Yeah. And, and or and the only way you get good at it is doing it over a long period of time. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. It would be like having sex for a year and thinking you're, you know, uh, Johnny Sins. There you go for you. You know, porn. <laughs> you know what I mean, you gotta you gotta put that work in. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever met Johnny Sins? No, no, man. <laughs> it's funny. The only reason why I know him is uh, uh, another comic referenced him and i didn't know who he was and then then he brought it up and then i looked him up i'm like oh, i've seen this guy <laughs> <laughs> i know who that guy is <laughs> you know like at the comedy store a lot of times like um like a porn guys would come in because they, they were and, and you're looking and you're like it's the weirdest thing because nobody knows their names right you be, like you know if and if you see maybe a hundred you'll recognize them. yeah <laughs> you're like wait a minute that's that guy from uh you know um, and, then, and then at the comedy store, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to this dude. And I'm like, where, the, where do I know this dude? I'm like, yo, where you from, man? And he said, oh, I'm from out here. I said, well, where'd you grow up? And I, I'm like, did you grow up in Jersey? He's like, no. I go, Florida? He's like, no. I'm like, where, where the fuck do I know you? And then he goes, dude, I do porn. I go, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. How's it going? And you're you're buying him drinks. He's like, who asked? It was... Uh, Steven St. Croix, that's, that's the guy at the store that I, I took a second to, to recognize. I, uh, well, anyways, getting back to uh, – I forgot what I was talking about now. We were talking about Johnny Sims, but oh, no, I, no, no. I actually no, met no, Johnny Sims. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. I, I met him at the Laugh Factory in Vegas because I, I uh, used to open for Hots, Jeremy Hots, uh -huh. and, and uh, he was there. He went to the show. And it, you know how the green room is like – Yeah, it's like it's long. Like, yeah, it's like long and there's couches and all that stuff. Yeah, they have all the, the thing and they do karaoke there. Yeah, and they have no security in the green room. You know what I mean? So Johnny Sims, so I perform, right? And then Johnny Sims comes in and he's like, hey, you were really funny. And I didn't know who this guy was, but I, I knew that I knew him. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. And I was like, I think I know you from somewhere. He's like, I'm in porn. I was like, oh, yeah. What was your name again? Johnny Sims. So then like I Googled him, like acting like I was texting. I was like, holy shit. I used to think I used to have your dick. <laughs> like It was just so weird. <laughs> oh, why did you do virtual? <laughs> well, no, because you know how like when you watch porn, you think it's your dick doing those things. To those girls, you know what I mean? Like you use the imagination. Nah, dude. <laughs> I, I, that's where you lost me, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> I lost Johnny, too. I was like, ah. Uh, yeah, you lost me on that one, bro. But that's all right. <laughs> You're on the spectrum. <laughs> hey, how do you open this thing back up? Like, oh, are you on the computer? Yeah. Oh, my phone rang, and I and I and I had a. I don't see you now. How, how do you get back to that? Oh, uh, I I I don't know. I guess hit the the button that says up. Uh. As long as you can hear me, though, that's good, right? I can hear you. Oh, all right, cool. You don't need to see me. I'm a pretty ugly dude. I just want to see how to, what, what the hell just happened. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Back to business. Yeah. Hey, my, my friend D told me to tell you hi. Oh, I love D to death, man. Yes. Me, we, we have a lot of history together. When she managed the improv. Yeah. 
she, Dude, we had some good times back then, man. Yeah, she was the first uh, booker to give me the the shot. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm wondering if I hit. Uh, I'm such an idiot. I don't know how any of this shit works, dude. Oh, it's what? fine. I could see you. I mean, what the heck's going on here? Okay, right, so it looks like okay. I don't even see me now. Oh, your camera might be off then. No, no, no. It's not. The phone rang. And I don't even see anybody. I can hear each other though. So can you still see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll just roll with it. Yeah, it's oh, fine. We These things happen. We found it. <laughs> Do, like, no, no, what I was saying though about is like, you know, you can't do comedy two, three years and and think you're gonna, you know, that that you can smell any any veteran comic can smell how, how long a comic's been and be be in the vicinity of it. Oh, really? After, after like 15 years, it, it gets a little crowded. I mean, right. it gets crowded. You know, if you're after 15, you've pretty much seen it all. But if you're like a six-year comic, an 11-year comic, and after a 15-year comic, you can see the differences. You could just, yeah. you, could, you know, comfortability, cadence, um, you know, point of view, delivery. But I would say after 11 years is when you really can, you start to get in that zone. I mean, you know, I always say there's certain corners that you turn. You could tell. Yeah. I remember. I remember watching Eric Griffin one time, and Theo Vaughn one time, and Sebastian one time, and you just saw it was like a night and day. It's just almost. I mean, and, and it's funny because they were always good. Right. You know what I mean? And then you see him turn this corner. When you're watching him overnight, you know, when you're at the comedy store every night and you're doing all the gigs around town and, and yeah. then all of a sudden you watch him one night and you're about to go up and you're like, Jesus, this guy's just, if you didn't think they could get any better. They and just it, got it, better. Yeah. It's just because of repetition, 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 you know? Now, would you, cause your brother's also a stand up too. Did you guys used to perform together? Yeah, my brother ended up having kids and, and, and uh, you know, he, he couldn't do it, but he ended up getting a great, a phenomenal job in uh, post-production. Oh, nice. So, you know, he works at one of the top post-production houses in L.A. Oh. He does very well, but he had two daughters and, you know, it, it and then he only could work at night. And that kind of put a halt on everything. But now that they're older, a little older, you know, uh, I, I, I kept it going. Yeah. Well, yeah, my brother was a great writer, man. Yeah. Would you, would you say like uh, great writers are usually uh, good stand-ups? Because there's, I feel there's a difference between performers and writers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm like my brother is more of a writer. Um, I'm more of a performer. Yeah. You know, um, but it's almost as if like we were two different. If I was a different type of comic – I would probably be him. And if he was a different type of comic, he'd probably be me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that makes sense. Personalities are different. Yeah. yeah. You have like, you have writers. I mean, again, uh, I like to do all these little analogies and stuff, but you have like your writers and your performers. So if you were to do the, the ultimate writer, you probably have to give it to Carlin because everything was about the words. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you had your ultimate performer, it would have to go to Pryor because he was like, you know, just storytelling and being naturally funny, then I think everybody falls somewhere in between there. I right. think Bill Burr is the perfect storm. Yeah. Did you, I think did Bill, you, I did think you see his SNL monologue? He's getting a lot of heat. Yeah, on it's that. beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it amazing how today, first of all, he didn't, he didn't take his dick out. He didn't do any, he just made funny observations. Yeah. And, and, Listen, man, let me tell you something. When I first started, that, that religious right was, was always, but they were never as bad as these uh, progressive woke people. They're right. awful. I mean, they're awful. Yeah. They are awful. All the, the guy stated facts and called people out on their bullshit, and now he's got to go. He's got to go. What the fuck? And, yeah. and by the way, you can't cancel a bill. Nobody gets canceled. <laughs> you know what happens is this. You have a network that is scared, but you know, you, even if you have 20 million people, you still have 300 more in, in America that don't give a fuck. Right. right. So 
they they become they verbalize they verbalize they bring up like well, he's a white male and but what what does that even fucking mean so what the, his so so was Einstein I guess that what the theory of relativity doesn't apply I mean what what does race and gender have anything to do with when somebody's saying how ridiculous it is yeah it's ridiculous and to me it's not even I, even if you took me out of the equation okay yeah. what the fuck does that got to do with how funny and accurate that is. Right. It would be like too, and the, basically the point is that that if if my if my mom was a serial killer. Right. Right? And she has a son and a daughter. That doesn't mean now that I'm not a, I'm less exempt from that being my mom because I'm a male. <laughs> it's still your ancestor. Right. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. <laughs> my, my, what does that got to do now? Like now white women are like, well, that was white males 400 years ago or 200 years. Ago. That has nothing to do with us. And it's just typical white female bullshit. And, and I think it was great. And, and he called them on it and yeah. who would, they have out can't they can't, they have canceled themselves by trying to cancel everybody. Right. I agree. Nobody cares anymore. And, and you know what else is the internet's changing. Yeah. Every, I mean, entertainment's changing. Nobody's watching TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just morphing into something else because this isn't a chicken and egg argument. Yeah. You, and that you put out a good product. People want to see it. And majority of people don't care about what color you are and what your race is. Or, I meant your gender and your sexual. I've never once looked at a movie and watched a trailer and said, but what's the diversity? You know, you look at the premise. <laughs> if it's good, it's good. I, I don't watch, I don't watch a movie. That's the other thing too. I'm not inspired by people that look like me. Yeah. <laughs> if you need to be inspired by only, if you're only inspired by people that look like you, then I don't think you need to be inspired. <laughs> I, I want you inspired. I agree. Uh, one, one of my uh, mentors is a little, a little Hindu uh, woman that is as, as uh, uh, from New Zealand. And she's one of the, she, we, we were writing scripts together and I, I would have loved to somebody do a documentary on, on two of us, on the both of us. Yeah. She works at Auckland in Auckland and uh, New Zealand at the university and just a brilliant, remarkable woman. And inspiring and just so sweet and just a, a great person all the way around. It's one of the most remarkable people I've ever met. Yeah. What is that? I, that is the total opposite of some Guido half Guido from Jersey. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if I, if I'm only looking for people that look like me, then I'm not going to be ever be inspired. I don't think they're, <laughs> I'll just, you know, people that are of my ilk. I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> Yeah. Talent and, is talent is very rare. That's yeah. the other thing people don't realize. It's very rare and it needs to be preserved and it needs to be respected and not everybody's talented. So, you know, there are a lot of people that can act, but there's very, very few actors. You know oh, I, mean? I 100% agree. Like, uh, I think Will Smith is an actor. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like DiCaprio is an actor, yeah. you know, um, so you know, there are people that are just that are very few. Like there was a project going on where um, Scarlett Johansson was going to play a transgender uh -oh. and they went nuts and said, how dare her? Well, it's it's acting. I mean, not, so now nobody gets to hear this story. Right. Because there's very few people that can sell and open a movie like a Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. I mean, exactly. and by the way, you, you didn't need to hire a robot from the future to make the Terminator. It's, it's, it's Hollywood. Right. Yeah. You know, Schwartz and, you know, it's just, you, you, you're playing roles. Yeah. And, and I really hope that the decision makers start to respect the art, people's art and the people that put the time in and the people that are really good at what they do, because it's, it's, this is a very short sighted approach to an industry right now where if you want this thing to survive, you have to start putting in the best of the best or people just are going to tune out. Yeah. Uh, that was one question I had because you're actually on a TV show of something that's 
kind of that formula where it started off as on YouTube and now it's going on Netflix with Cobra Kai. Like, how is that like transition? Because that's a perfect example of a show that just started on YouTube. Well, it, you know, YouTube tried to start a streaming, a streaming service uh-huh. and, you know, like to compete with Netflix. So they, they purchased some, some shows to do and they, they threw some money at like, you know, Kevin Hart and, and, you know, and, and they were building it. And again, this is, it's not an accident that this show's number one in the world. It's got Will Smith executive producing it. Right. It's got the writers of Hot Tub Time Machine and also Harold and Kumar and directors involved. Right. Yeah. It's got a, 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 a iconic characters and storyline, you know, and you're, and, and it's not an accident. Yeah. The, the writers on the show are brilliant and yeah. they've created a world inside of a world that everybody knew they played it perfectly. That's years and years of producing shows and writing shows and being passionate about what they do. You know what I mean? Now- they know that you do stand up. Do they ever let you improv in scenes or do you? Stick I mean, to- yeah, like, you know, uh, even being behind the scenes on a couple of other projects that I've done, you know, the writers, there are some writers that are just want you to say their words. Right. Then, but you have to give information, you know, obviously to keep the story going. So we'll do different takes. Like they'll say, okay, just let's, let's do it this way. And then we want to see your take on it but you can't spend all day on one scene. So you get one or two where you get to improvise and maybe three or four where you're sticking to the script. And there's a couple of scenes already in the show that, that I improv that they put in. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, they're, they're fans of comedy too. They're comedic writers. Yeah. I mean, again, when you're dealing with people that do comedy, they're not, they're just being funny. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know, man. Some, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm, that's why I love the stand-up world, and it needs to be left to stand-up comics. Yeah. And then uh, an, another question I had for you, and then we have a couple Twitter questions, is uh, your special principles office you released on YouTube. Yeah. I, yeah. I just now released my special on YouTube, and, like, I, I, I was just wondering, like, did you try shopping it around? Because I feel like YouTube was my last source. You know what I mean? Like um, in the beginning, yes. And then I got an offer. I mean, I don't want to. A lot of the streaming formats changed where they went right. from licensing to wanting to, to produce their own. So yeah. what was, when I first made that, um, I, it was under the intention that I could get a streaming site to license it in the process of making it they weren't going to do that anymore. They, yeah. they were going to produce and own, produce and own. So I did get an offer. It was a small offer, but then I wanted the digital rights. And again, man, I, I, I thought I, I was looking ahead at, at what the trends were at the time. Uh-huh. So I did get an offer where I, I actually wouldn't have, I put my own money into it. I only had one take too. So what I did was I, I just built out a site. I mean, it's a long story. Yeah. But it wasn't my original choice. I was kind of forced, not forced, but I was, I was starting to go that way. And then I just said, I'm going to do it. And Ari Shafir is the one that's like, bro, just put it out, man. Yeah. You know, Ari is one of the guys that has always been ahead of the curve too. Yeah. You know, and he's like, look, they're not into that stuff anymore. Okay. You need to, to put it out on your own. So I, I had the idea where I saw this, um, like the honor system. You ever go, oh no, you're not, you're in Irvine, right? Uh, no, but I live right by Irvine. Okay. So. There, there's this thing called Rungin Canyon. Right. And, and these people were, were, where you go up there, they have like waters and candy bars and stuff, but it's an honor system. You take and you put money in. And I always, I remember walking by that thing a couple of times going, somebody's got to rob that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know I would have. <laughs> right. So I saw the, the person re- refilling it and I asked him, do you get robbed? They go, yeah, you know, sometimes, but our average donation is $5. So somebody <laughs> usually takes a water and a, a candy bar or a granola bar and they leave five. So yeah. that, that really only costs them about 60 cents. So, you know, they make up for it. If somebody, if some idiot takes a bottle of water, it's not much. Right. And then coming from the nightclub business before I got into stand up, 
we used to, you know, you have a cover on the door just to make a value of the club. But if you lift the cover, like there's certain people you let in, if you let those people in, you're still going to get their money at the bar, right? So if you don't get them at the door, you get them at the bar. I'm abbreviating my thought process here. So basically what I did was I built out my own website and I gave it away. Yeah. And I told people, if you, if you want to leave a donation, leave it. I'm not, I mean, if you want to own it, you can buy it for five or you can get a t-shirt for 20 and get the, get the download for free or just leave me an email or you don't have to do anything. Yeah. I really wanted the emails. Long story boring. My average donation was like 20 bucks. Wow. Right? Then I took it. I ebbed in the Vimeo and then I was talking to my, my social media guy. He's like, dude, we should, we can ebb in YouTube. So then after I ran it on my own website for like six months, I put a YouTube player in there and now it's at like 2.7 million views. Yeah. And then it was featured in men's health as one of the top five specials. And it was for Netflix and, and one of them and, and just my YouTube one. Yeah. But I messed up. I put the whole hour out. My buddy, Andrew Schultz did it differently where he, he, he took that and he made it better where he cut it up in like 10 different, different things. And then, it kind of started that, uh, you know, that little trend, but I am absolutely a hundred percent the first one to do that. Yeah. And awesome. I'll, every, any comic will tell you. Yeah. That's awesome. Hopefully the my- next, I just shot another one, which, um, um, uh, distributing with all things comedy right now or trying to at least. And, yeah. and if worst case scenario, I'll just self distribute it again. Yeah. You know, I know how uh, to do it. Time. You know, I don't know if you know, uh, Christopher Titus, but he helps uh, other comics pr- uh, distribute specials too. Well, you know, I was very, again, man, it, it, I have a good amount of YouTube subscribers now where, and I've already made some money back on, I already made my money back on the other one. Yeah. When I've talked to younger comics, I always say to them, you know, you don't, and, and I, but I've always had this mentality. You don't need permission to exist. No, I agree. Yeah. It's so funny how many hurdles there are just to tell jokes, whether yeah. it's, and it's okay to have like the audience members, like the uptight audience members that if it, you know, uh, that's not my cup of tea, but now what's crazy is you've got young comics that are policing other comics that aren't even real comics. <laughs> I agree. Yes. <laughs> Nobody even knows. Nobody's ever even seen you perform. I 100% agree. I mean, like I said, it's one thing to have a comic go up to you and say, look, dude, these people aren't even real comics and they're policing comics. And, and and on top of that, you've got, uh, you know, uh, a lot of networks and and streaming services now that, you know, are, are, are either getting away from that and, you know, there's just so many obstacles, but the internet is, is your best friend now. And, 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 you know, it, it, it's the best tool for any artist out there. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, man, th- those people are eventually going to die and go away. Just like the, those, you know, this, there's always been those that have tried to censor and, and keep other people quiet. Okay. So that kind of makes me no feel way. better in a way for when this, when everything gets back to normal, though, some of those people will go away. And we're talking about the woke, the woke culture. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bite my tongue on that. I don't care. <laughs> they, I, I've been doing it long enough. They are just as, they are the new religious right, but 10 times worse. Yeah. Plus when I went to a comedy club, I didn't see a religious right person trying to do stand up. Right. <laughs> right. Now what you're seeing is the people that are trying to censor you are trying to get on stage. <laughs> And, and, and they think that if they could get you eliminated, that they're going to get a spot and it doesn't work that way. We, we comedy is not going anywhere. You're not canceling anyone. Yeah. It, nobody goes away because a bunch <laughs> of angry, you know, white people, and it, it's always rich white kids are upset. Right. Nobody's going anywhere. I know. Well, it's going to be here. And, and if it's not on TV, it's going to be in the clubs. If it's not in the clubs, it's going to be in the parking lots. If it's not in the parking lots, it's it's here to stay. It ain't going anywhere. And see, I think that's why I'm very blessed being a broke white kid. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, it's that's usually who's doing it. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, 
I'm friends with a lot, a lot of comedians that, and a lot of comedians of all races and <laughs> nobody that I know that is in comedy <laughs> clubs working and are writing on shows <laughs> are this angry about <laughs> her monologue on SNL. <laughs> Black people are applauding it. Yeah. It's so true. Even Rick Moranis liked it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> New York City's back, baby. I mean, that's that's what comedy is. Yeah. And, and that's everything, too, man. You have a lot of people living in New York City that aren't from New York City, and they're trying to just go, go, go back to where you're from. Yeah. That's well, the sensibility of the Northeast. It's what's always made us funny. <laughs> I yeah is being rough around the edges and just saying shit that's on your mind and we're not gonna stop. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. If anything, we're just gonna get worse. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's human nature. <laughs> Buck up. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. What, what what are we doing? Yeah. I mean, listen, the, the industry, if it wants to survive, it needs to stop with this bullshit. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know it's going to get worse in November. Whoever wins this election, if if Donald Trump wins again, they're going to lose their goddamn minds. They're not oh, even. Oh yeah, gonna, definitely. They're going to throw a, a fit, and you know, it's just ridiculous how they can't be adults, and or even just like, if you want to do something, then do it. You, you, you're not. You're not making yourself better by t eliminating people or trying to eliminate people or try and throw monkey wrenches into, into the art process, the creative process. The funny yeah. thing is, is I'm a pretty liberal dude, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm very liberal guy, old school Democrat. Yeah. You know, this new shit it ain't flying with me. So you're all old school Democrat, like Jimmy Carter. No, nah, like, no. uh, like John F. Kennedy. Oh, John F. Kennedy. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm, I'm I'm a Catholic from New Jersey, of course. Yeah. I mean, we were all we were all union workers, and and you know, my 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 grandparents they, they were immigrants. They came here in the twenties. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, they, so, and they didn't speak English, and and you know, it's just the part of America that you know when you're going to New York City, it's kind of hard. I'm the only only one in my in my family even attempt to go to college. Yeah. You know. You what know I mean? I was saying how like uh, like I know a lot about presidents. The one thing I don't like is when uh, comics say Trump's the worst president ever because I just want to say, hey, have you ever heard of uh, William Henry Harrison? He was only president for thirty days. <laughs> um, and by the way, he's he's just an awful. I, I, I don't even I don't even have an opinion anymore. The, the thing that makes me laugh though about this whole thing is that. Before he became a Republican, he, they made him. Hollywood yeah. loved him. Yeah, they loved his money. They loved putting him in the Source magazine and rapping about him. And Jared Kushner was their number one contributor. <laughs> you don't, don't act like there's nothing worse than somebody that's acting like they're doing something for the greater good when we know it's not. Okay. Yeah. So if you're gonna sit there and tell me Joe Biden is a honest man who can get things done and is the best that the Democrats had to offer. What about a Tulsi? I love Tulsi Gabbard. You're telling me that's it. Joe Biden's the only one. Yeah. The one, and by the way, Trump overturned his crime bill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, none of this makes sense to me. None of it does. I don't vote anyways. And, and, and I'm very, I, everybody knows I don't until I see a candidate that like I was really inspired, not inspired by that's a bad word. Cause I just put that down. That I seek to get the job done. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what it's you mean. Bad. It's a bad word. Uh, somebody I look at and go, you know what? This person looks like they could get the job done. Yeah. Because they work for us. Some people like, you see these idiots with these flags with the, like the Trump and Biden flag. Why would you, who, who does this? These people work for you. Yeah. Well, Brett, I have a couple Twitter questions that uh, I want to get out and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, this is from Twisted Viv 18. Uh, Brett, what was your favorite type of cheesecake to recommend at the Cheesecake Factory? Banana cream all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Have you have you gone there and tried like the new? Because they have like a thirty more cheesecakes on every page. You know? Oh man, you know I, I get there. It's like PTSD, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the banana cream is my favorite, though. I'm not gonna lie, man. That was yeah. pretty dope. And vanilla bean was pretty good too. A banana bean. And, and, and we have a seasonal cheesecake, the pumpkin uh, pumpkin carrot cake they had there. That's good. Pumpkin spice, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this is from uh, Mark Four Eight Two. Brett, have you ever thought of doing a version of Jim Vanny in an Ernest movie? <laughs> like Ernst goes, uh, yeah, <laughs> Jim Barney. <laughs> you know, he started as just a, a commercial. You know, he was like a, a. Do you know who this is or no? Yeah, Jim Jim Vanny. Yeah, it, it, but he was like, you know, Ernest goes to camp. Yeah, but he was really a very, very, very good comedian. Like he was yeah. a good comedian and he died in it, 2000, right? 2001. I think so. Yeah. But he, he, uh, he was a standup and, and they, then, he, you know, they threw him in a commercial to play this. Somebody wrote, I guess some advertiser thought of that. And then they just took that character and made movies out of it. But he started at the store as well. He was a comedy store comedian. Oh, uh, did you ever meet him? No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> who, uh, this is from, uh, Let's answer this question, then we'll ask that one question. This is from uh, Louis42. Brett, is your character going to have more screen time in Cobra Kai Season 3? Yeah, yeah. He comes back. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Uh, my question was, who who's the most, uh, I wouldn't say famous, but comic hero of yours that you've ever met, living or dead? Uh, I, I would say this, uh, but I, you know, we're, we're good friends now. I mean, I've known him for almost 20 years from when I first met him, but when I was a kid, uh, the ones that inspired, like the ones that inspired me was Andrew Dice Clay and, uh, Eddie Murphy. Like when I saw Eddie Murphy delirious as a little kid, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. What is that? How do I do that? I was already doing that in class. I didn't know you could do that. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, but I've met Dice. Dice was one of my, you know, as a kid too, man, watching him as a kid and then seeing him at the store. And it's so funny because I, when you're, when I was younger, I, I didn't realize, I didn't appreciate his genius until I was in stand up for a long time. When you, when I went, and a lot of comics know this, when you watch and Dice's commitment is unfucking believable. His no fear, his commitment. Um, even s some of the premises, you know, you, cause it, it's almost like I saw two different comedians, right? There was the one that I saw that I laughed at what that the absurd shit he was saying. And then there was the one when I saw the genius behind the absurd shit he was saying. And, and, you know, it's really, he's, he's probably the one that I would say as a kid that I met that I really, I mean, Kiniston died before I met him, but I mean, so I couldn't have met him. Yeah. Uh, never got to meet prior. I met Robin Williams and Carlin a, a bunch of times, but you know, I, although I, I love their stand up, it didn't inspire me. Right. Uh, like, <laughs> like, uh, uh, Andrew did when I was a kid. Did you ever open up for dice? No, my brother did. I didn't. Oh, wow. I bet you hated your brother that night. <laughs> no, you know, I actually got him the gig, man. I was on the road and I couldn't do it. And, oh, so you were offered it. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't do it. And I said, to uh, God, like, come on, I want you to open. I go, I can't, man. I, I you know, I'm 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 working. <laughs> said, why don't you use my brother? Oh and, wow. and Dice and he goes, Yeah, okay. So he used my brother. Oh, well, that's um, awesome. And Keith worked with him a bunch of times. Oh, cool. Well, Brett, where where can the folks at home follow you? Just go to Brett Comedy, Brett with one T comedy dot com. All right. Uh, I actually, I actually had one quick question. Are you still doing the, the, your podcast, the Brent Ernest show? No, no, man. We've been done with that for a while, but I'm going to start up. I just, when I get to Vegas, I built a studio in my place. Oh, cool. Awesome. So, uh, I'm going to start, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know. I would say that they don't know that I'm not an expert in history and uh, constitutional law. But it's it's a it's a passion of mine, just like presidents are for yours. Oh. So you know, I, I'm I'm thinking about doing a podcast. It's going to be really boring, I guess, but where uh, it'll be very specific. Where 
just breaking down a lot of uh, misinformation just with history. And, and, you know, it's like they don't even teach social studies anymore. No, not at all. That's why they say social studies is you just go in and read a book or something, right? There's no civics taught anymore. Like the, the basis behind the constitution is, is just dude. the constitution is one of the most vague and specific it's a living, breathing document. It's, it's really remarkable, the, the, the minds that wrote that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and the words, the, the verbiage is, is very specific. So <clears throat> I'm just thinking about doing like a more of a uh, informative as opposed to a, an opinionated one. And, you know, it's a passion of mine. Yeah. Well, and, when that comes out, I'll, because- I'll subscribe and listen to all of them, man. I mean, if, if it's your thing, I mean, you know, uh, there's like, you, you see a lot of things that go viral a lot and I watch it and, you know, it's so funny how you have Google right there. Right. Just Google it. <laughs> like, you know, there are so many things about the constitution that are debunked. Like God isn't in the constitution, no. but neither is a uh, separation of church and state. Oh, I didn't um, know. Yeah, it's the First Amendment is to protect religion from the government, not government from the religion. But we get separation from church and state in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote, but it's it's not in the Constitution, and and it's basically saying how, um, how you you know the Bible, even though it did influence the laws, it, it's you don't resort back to that. Right. You, you have your own laws and, and uh, pretty much all the founding forefathers, they weren't all Christian. They were all Adidas, but most yeah. of them were, you know, what else is in the constitution? Blacks aren't, aren't never said they were three fifths of a human being. Yeah. So you, you have a lot of these things that people just, you know, just, just take yeah. it at, at face value. Yeah. They, they don't even bother to research it. Yeah. You know, you get and, and you see all these different types of groups of people that are trying to politicize it. And, and it's funny because it seems to me that intellectualism is dead, you know, for, for, for to sit around in a think tank and just to discuss things that we already know. And, and the reason for that is, is that everybody's interacting now. Like, I, I you know, you, you, you watch these YouTube videos and re- read some of the comments. Yeah. And, and these people are actually just voicing something that they don't even know what they're talking about. No, I know it's, it's, it's ridiculous, but I think that that's where boredom comes in mind too. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if, first of all, if you really want to, an intellectual doesn't necessarily mean intelligent, by the way, because you have a shit ton of intelligent people, but they're not intellectuals. Right. So when dealing with any type of a topic, uh, whatever it may be, First of all, you have to be okay with being wrong, right? You have to be because you don't care if you're right or wrong. You just want to discuss what it is, right? It doesn't matter what the result is. Like in science, when, when, when there's very few laws in science, right? So if you're a scientist and you come up with a hypothesis, you want to test that. You don't want it. You, you don't care if you're right or wrong. You just want to see the results. And if the results are the same over and over and over and over again, then it becomes a law in science, right? Yeah. We, we don't apply this to anything else. Like if, if we're trying to solve problems, especially in government, there has to be a, some level of intellectual pragmatism, uh, uh, pragmatism where, you know, everybody comes together. You have this think tank of people. Some are not going to be the nicest people. Some aren't going to know how to talk. Some aren't going to be overly aggressive. They're just intellectuals. Yeah. And we sit and you discuss ideas and you discuss things and then you eventually have to vote. That's why I love sports. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite sport? Football. Oh. But I don't care what color you are. Okay. Yeah. I don't care what your feelings are. You got to win no matter yeah. how. So if it's fourth and one, are we going to punt? Are we going to go for it? We're not going to debate what color the quarterback is what, you know, we got to get to the decision right now, right? Yeah. And the best of the best will always win and will always start. I mean, there might be some politics involved when it comes to those $100 million contracts, but I'm saying on a whole. I think the, uh, the, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick know, is a perfect it's, it's example people- of that. Excuse me? I said, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is a perfect example of that. Like right, you have right. Tua who's getting – 
ridiculous amounts, but Fitzpatrick's playing, getting like five million, and he's actually at right now better. You know. What I mean? Well, I'm mean, and and they're looking at it, going, okay, Tua's not only has that bum hip, the Dolphins, but he can also learn from this guy. Yeah. And groom and you groom, and then you you eventually take take it over. You know, and and again, you're seeing it in sports as well. But anyway, the point is, is that, <laughs> that, you know, yeah. so it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anything. We either got, and if you're wrong, we lose as a team. Yeah. Right? It's not like, well, I told you, you should have went for it. And da, 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 Cause you don't know what that would have been. It's just, <laughs> I think that the social media and the internet is, is finally coming to a head. And I think that this, this uh, pandemic allows people to really reflect and say, look, I know as a comic, I, I'm thinking, I, I, I hadn't, the longest I missed of being on stage in my 23 years of doing stand up was 10 days. And that was because I had a honeymoon. Oh. So from when I first stepped on stage to when I got married, okay, and went on my honeymoon, I, I got up at least almost, I try to get up almost five, six nights a week. Nice. So when that pandemic hit and I lost all my gigs and I'm sitting there and I can't get up anywhere. And now I'm like, I can't wait to do a bar gig. I can't wait to just get up. I'll go do a parking lot. (laughs) So you start to really appreciate what's not there anymore. Yeah. Well, Brett, uh, I'm glad we finally got time to do this, man. It was awesome talking to you, pal. Yeah, no, man. Finally. I know I've uh, (laughs) been running around, man. So. All right. Well, uh, uh, take care, and we'll talk soon, man. You got it. Let me know when you guys are up and running, though, man. Yeah, definitely. I will. We'll um, get you back at the record. Any, any clue on that? No clue. I just texted Kenny, who co-books it with me, and he hasn't heard anything either. So, great. Well, let me know, oh, man. I'll be in Vegas. I'll fly right out. I promise you. All right, yeah. And uh, whenever I'm in Vegas, I'll hit you up. We could go karaoke at the Laugh Factory. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about all that, but, you know, we'll definitely go have some drinks and and hit a strip club, maybe. Um, uh, um, But you guys are still – you'll still be open, though, as of now. As of right now, yes. Okay, good. But, you know, it changes. We opened for about two weeks in June, the restaurant. We didn't have any shows, and then Newsom shut us down again. So, of course, he did. Yeah. So, the vineyard stayed open, right? Like I said, right now, as to my understanding, yes, we just don't know when. So, I'm trying to stay hyped. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay positive on it. I don't, on the other side, I don't see how if we keep losing money. You know what I mean? But, trying to stay. I do know when we open, we're going to be asking a lot of comics to come in cheap. <laughs> Fine, dude. I don't care. You no, know, it's, it's, there's a few of us. I mean, again, man, I, I know we're wrapping it up, but like Burn, me, Trevino, Parverzi, there's a bunch of us that were working the clubs. I mean, I don't give a shit. I'm not, I, I don't care about any of that shit. I think I actually had it in January, but you know, when, when you're a road guy, you've developed relationships with guys like yourself, the new club owners, the old club owners, and you know, everybody's a paycheck or two away from closing down. Yeah. So, you know, we got to keep this thing going. I know, right. I know the servers and bartenders need to, you know, it, so whether I'm coming in or not for what I would usually come in, as long as, you know, you, you get, you got to get that resuscitation back into the clubs and, you know, the, it, now this way, there's a little bit of money coming in. The servers get to work. The bartenders get to work. You know, the uh, the managers, the club, the people come in and out. It's exactly. It's not about it's not about the money at this point, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know? But well, I definitely won't come in for under fifty grand. But that's okay. <laughs> as long as I could do the miniature golf, we're good. Yeah, that that that's one of the funnest things there. <laughs> All right, Brett. Well, All I'll right, talk right, to you later, right. buddy. I love you. Have a great day, man. Me too, man. Later, cuz. But all right. So that was my interview with Brett Ernest, guys. Uh subscribe rate, not Ernest, Ernst. Sorry. I was I was reading a question. Subscribe, rate, review, follow Brett, and uh all that stuff. 
and uh, we'll get back to this, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.